It took me almost eight hours to work on this slot machine screen. This includes first sketch, coloring, rendering, and UI work. This is Raymond from Visual Project, and today I'll show you my workflow for creating a slot game screen. Ready? Let's get started. To start, I designed a very basic wireframe consisting of grey components that need to be on the screen. The components present a basis for an initial sketch that I will create as a separate layer. In this sketch, I can sketch the general structure of the screen, what the buttons, the slot machine and all the other elements on the screen will look like. As you can see, I use the brush tool to create a sketch that is as close to the desired look as possible. Because the slot machine is symmetrical on both sides, I prefer to use the symmetry option in Photoshop, and there I chose vertical. With this method, you can draw with the brush tool on one side of the canvas, and like a mirror, you will find that the other side also creates an identical drawing. When I work on screens of this type, I highly recommend experiencing the screen yourself using your phone. Already at the wireframe stage, I transferred the screen to the phone to understand if the proportions of the elements on the screen are good enough, if the positions of the elements are correct for the player, and if it is necessary to add or remove elements. Once you transfer the image to the phone in the early stages, it will be easy for you to understand what you need to fix, and more importantly, it will be easy for you to fix it before you perform a complex art or rendering process. Many of the elements I designed in the sketch changed along the way. This is natural in the design process and you will see that you will encounter this a lot during your work. In this case, for example, I had the idea of adding a ribbon to the slot machine or leaving the top bar with just coins and a settings button. Later on, you will see that I changed this direction and took the design to a slightly different place than the sketch. place texts even in the initial sketch stage. Once you examine the screen on your mobile phone as I recommended earlier, it will help you understand what size text is right for each element on the screen. After the initial sketch, it's time to start filling the screen with colors. Group all the layers of the initial sketch into a group and lower the opacity of the group. On the layer below the group, open a new layer and, using the pen tool, start creating strokes and fills to create the shape you want. Don't worry too much about the colors of the shapes, later on you can fine-tune the color you choose. By the way, there are a lot of methods I used during this video, and I'm not really talking about them all right now. I talk about some of the things in my other videos, but if it's still interesting to you, comment and maybe I can help you. At this point, I have already created the basic shape of the slot machine. I created shapes as symmetrically as I can. This will help me create a uniform and reliable structure. I decided to paint the machine with a gold frame and a blue base color. The central button on the screen, and the most important, is the spin button. In slot machine games, the spin is the main game mechanic, and the focus of the button must be clear in terms of color, size, and location. To the right of the spin button, I added a double bet button that allows the player to bet double and receive double prizes. And to the left of the spin button, I added an area that displays how many spins the player can make. Of course, you are welcome to design the machine however you wish. Be creative! Inside the real glass will be displayed the symbols of the slot machine. I added arrows on both sides of the real glass to make it clear to the player what result they got after pressing spin. Gold Rush. What do you think of this name for the slot machine? At first I had the idea of creating a ribbon with the title written on it. To do this I will create a shape based on the sketch I created earlier. The shape I create is for one side of the ribbon. After I finish with the right side I will duplicate the layers and flip horizontal. I'm not really happy with the ribbon. We'll move on and come back to fix that later. 
The next step is to color the UI components. After we've created the spin buttons, the multiply button and the spin count display, it's time to design the top bar. Let's start with the rendering process. Many designers will tell you that the right way is to use a brush, but I decided to do it using a gradient. It's not really common in the industry, but I think in this case it's the most convenient tool. I started with the golden frame of the slot machine. The inside will be dull and the outside will be bright. I wanted to give a feeling of depth, so I also painted the outside frame in different colors. The straight areas will be a balanced color, the areas that curve inward will be duller, and the areas that curve outward will be bright. Now we will begin the rendering process of the central area of the slot machine. Note that to work with the gradient, I use the blending options in Photoshop. With the options that Photoshop gives us, we can color each object and even define additional settings that help in the design process. Similarly to what we did for the frame, the blue area will also be composed of lighter and darker colors. Keep coloring the machine objects. Ensure you choose the right colors for all the objects, but also maintain separation between them. For example, I use a lot of subtle drop shadows or strokes to separate objects that are on top of each other. Look at how the colors blend together. The bright yellow and light blue give a sense of light coming from above. The dull red and blue give a sense of shadow. And the orange along with the regular blue are the balance. Now we will render the real glass area. In this case, I want to give the feel of a wheel, so I will paint the top and bottom with duller colors and the center with lighter colors. Imagine a wheel attached to a cart. The connection at the top creates a shadow, and the floor adjacent to the bottom also creates a shadow. What is left is the lighter area in the center. This is a relatively complex job. You need to know a lot of techniques to do it well. If you're interested, let me know in the comments and I'll upload a video explaining how to do it correctly. The bottom of the slot machine needs work. I'll use blending options to make the components look more realistic. I'll do this by using gradients, drop shadows, inner shadows and strokes. Creating a mobile game UI is no easy task at all. It requires a lot of technical knowledge in graphics software, a lot of experience in creating physical elements that combine light, color, shape, and more. The hardest challenge for me in creating a game UI is the ability to make everything uniform. That is, every UI element in the game fits in with other elements without being out of place. It may sound easy, but believe me, sometimes it can be very difficult. I painted the frame of the buttons gold, and the buttons themselves blue. Of course, blue will not be their final color because of the contrast with the color of the slot machine. This is a good time to try some things. Gold? Maybe green. Choosing the color for the button is a really important choice. A little tip, this is not the first time I've mentioned this, but it's really important that you check your design on your mobile phone. You just don't realize how much insight you'll have once you do it. Just export a photo from Photoshop and transfer it to your phone. That way, you can feel for yourself what you need to fix. After we're done with the main button, it's time to work on the multiplication button. Here too, I'll try a few colors to find the most suitable color. When I designed these buttons, I knew that their shape had to match the shape of the slot machine and that their colors had to match the slot machine, but at the same time, be distinct enough. That's why I eliminated the blue color and chose colors with higher contrast. I'll go back to the machine. To highlight the frame and make it more realistic, I add an inner shadow between the blue area and the gold area. I did this because when there are two objects close together, their shadow will automatically be duller. There is a very logical explanation for this that has to do with the light source and the distance between the objects, but I will elaborate on that in another video. I added the same shading action to the arrows and also to the inside of the real glass. What do you think about it now? Do you notice any improvement? In the next step, I will add text to the buttons. It is very important that the text matches the style of the button, especially in terms of its color and size on the screen.
One of my favorite things to do is create game UI icons. The first icon I'll create is the coins icon in the top bar. I put the V for visual projects in the center of the coin. By the way, I created an excellent video for you of animating a coin using After Effects. You're welcome to take a look. The component next to the icon will be used as an area to display the amount of coins the player has. It is important that this area be relatively long so that it can accommodate a range of numerical values. What about the settings button? The button is located in the upper right corner of the screen and consists of the button itself and an icon. It's very important that the design style of the button matches the other objects on the screen. To create the settings icon, I use the polygon and ellipse tools. Using Ctrl plus E on the keyboard, I will combine the shapes and then remove the circles using the pathfinder. How is the design of the icons I designed connected? First of all, the size, the use of gradients and simple shapes, the subtle 3D effect under the icons, and the strokes and drop shadow I added to make these icons stand out. By the way, I tried to use the same stroke and drop shadow for the text too. The design must remain as consistent as possible. Let's move on to the title. It may seem simple, but I had a few tries with the title before I reached the final result. I wanted to design a title that would stand out, but not be the main focus of the screen. Designing titles for mobile games is an art that not many people experience. It's usually the job of monetization designers, but I have to admit that even as a UI designer, I really enjoy doing it. So this is the final title, what do you think? Next I will go back to creating all the icons we need for the screen. Let's start with the ticket icon. Each ticket will be used for one spin of the slot machine. In this case too, the design of the icon is very important. It must be similar in style to the other icons on the screen. The use of the tickets icon and the coins icon will not only be for the UI of the screen, it will also be for the slot machine itself. Since this whole design will not actually go into development, I can expand on the design I planned and the features on the screen. I am adding another loot box icon to the screen to display inside the real glass along with the coins and tickets. As always, the design style must be similar to the other icons on the screen. I keep the style of the gradients, the size, and the final effects of the stroke and drop shadow to make the design as similar as possible to the other icons. I will place the new icon in its place on the slot machine. I added a currency area to the top bar. This area will be for the diamonds I want to add to the screen. In most games, coins are used as a simple currency, and diamonds are used as a special currency that is more valuable and harder to obtain. That is why the design of the diamond needs to be more attractive. A few more small fixes and we're done. That's it! I really hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to click the like and subscribe button. If you have any questions, write them in the comments. I will try my best to answer everyone and maybe even make explanatory videos for you. See you in the next video.